Facebook as the Startup Business Coach. Welcome to UCB, Lisa. Good morning, Vicky. Uh, we're going to talk lots more in a moment about a very special partnership that's been launched to help particularly faith-inspired entrepreneurs. Mm. But first of all, we've got to talk about your own story because it's quite remarkable. Um, <laughs> You come from a whole history of, of foodies in the family, don't you? Yeah, I am the third generation of women uh, restauranters. Started with my grandmother, Lily Kwok. She started the first restaurant in Middleton, Manchester in the 50s, even before Chinatown started in Manchester. So it's quite a big pressure to live up to, really. And food is really in our blood, you know, we can't really get away from it. And we started our restaurant in Manchester in 2004. And the space that we had was a car park and we built that restaurant in four weeks, which was one of the most stressful and most rewarding, um, you know, points in my life, really. <laughs> Building a restaurant in four weeks, that is just remarkable. And it was, it, well, it caught the eye of certain chef with a, an award and a competition on the telly. That's right, I mean, um, as you know, in the restaurant business, it's, it's very, very, you know, incredibly tough. 90% of restaurants close within their two years of trade, and we were no exception. And, uh, you know, we knew that we loved people, we loved food, and, you know, we loved kind of like the whole um, atmosphere of serving as well. And our customers could see that because we used to pray for them if they had healing, you know, problems with um, health or finances and general things. And one of the things that um, we got we got pushed forward for was this thing called Gordon Ramsay's F word. And it was a thing that you couldn't really nominate yourself for. The customers had to put yourself forward. So little did we know that this TV show would transform our lives. And this was the point where our business was, you know, it was building up a little bit, but it was, you know, it was struggling a little bit. And this this really was the God moment that broke broke us really broke through for us, you know. And we competed with 10,000 restaurants in UK and we won the accolade for Manchester, which was really the turning point in our whole business and our whole kind of like career. It was incredible. Things just kept accelerating for you, didn't they? In oh my goodness, it did. Traveling the world. Tell us about some of those experiences. Well, on the back of that, we had so many people ask us, you know, um, I'm gluten intolerant and uh, I can't eat certain ingredients. Can you adapt your dishes to my dietary requirements? And it found, and we found out that actually our ingredients, because we our sources, because we made them in house, uh, we don't use those sort of like ingredients that are, have gluten in. So we then were asked to like bottle up our sources with a with a regular customer that came on Friday called Jim. His mum loved our sources and said, "Look, I'll make you a deal." If you bottle up your sauces, the ones that I like to order, um, I'll make you a label for your sauces and you can start a sauce business. And that's how our sauce business started in manufacturing. We then um, uh, started writing cookbooks as well because we have a cookery school and our, our students come from all over the UK and abroad to learn how to make Chinese cuisine. Um, and we started writing our first cookbook. The first cookbook became a Times bestseller. We then did a dim sum course, teaching people how to make dumplings and um, all the kind of like different types of dim sums that you can do at home. And that became a Times bestseller. The third book, we went traveling in China. That was a street food book about Chinese food. And that won a Gourmand Award, uh, which was incredible because you're competing with all the authors around the world, you know, for that title. And we won it for UK. Um, we then started manufacturing these sauces. We went on a program called Dragon's Den as well, pitched our sauces. Um, and I guess, you know, God really had his hand on us and our business. And we literally went from making, you know, say 50 bottles in the restaurant to getting a huge order with Sainsbury's, which was 20,000 bottles. So you can imagine the scale up was, and the learning curve was incredible. And that source business took us to about 15 countries worldwide um, and also led us to cooking for celebrities and VIPs where we could really kind of like pray for people and pray for the food before it was served, which was a real big honour, you know. Um, and I guess the most um, proudest moment was cooking for like David Cameron and the Premier of China, you know, uh, being being selected to go and cook for 
those sort of VIPs and really kind of like influencing them as well. You know, it, it was a great, great experience. Lisa, tell us about your personality. Are you someone who <laughs> is driven, competitive, or do you just accept the, the doors that God has been opening in your life and you've just been walking through them? And you sound quite chilled, like just someone who takes it all in their stride. I, I am actually a very chilled person. Um, all the people that I've hired throughout the business, you know, we, we, we see them as a team and friends. We don't see them, I'm the boss and you just, you're just the doer. Um, I really do believe in, um, you know, treating people with kindness. Uh, I recently did an interview with someone that I met 12 years ago. And he says, the thing that I really remember about you was you were so kind to me, you know. I think in business, you don't need to be so aggressive, um, so cutthroat. Um, end of the day, even if there is competition, it's healthy competition. And I think it's important to understand what you bring to the table and your strengths. It's not about, um, you know, competing on a price point or competing on a product. It's actually believing in yourself and your product and really serving that customer. And that's what we've done in all the businesses that we've created. You know, it's really been customer driven, listening to their needs and obviously kind of like just meeting them and excelling what they want, really. And you have so much experience and expertise and passion to pass on to others. Tell us about this this partnership then that's been backed by the, the Cinnamon Network International, the Spirit of Enterprise. The Spirit of Enterprise. Well, it started by Matt Bird, um, who obviously is the founder of Cinnamon Network. And what it is, it's... Um, it's really an initiative to really call out faith-driven entrepreneurs to step out into their God-given calling in life. Uh, people that have thought about maybe starting a business or maybe already in business that want to kind of like grow. It's something that we're, we're, we're passionate about, you know, generating jobs for the economy. As you know, with the pandemic and COVID, it's really decimated a lot of industries. You know, people have... Uh, been in business for many years that have gone back to startup mode again because because their businesses have closed down. Um, this initiative will really help bring a collaboration of coaches, capital and connections together. And we believe that this, this connection, um, coaching capital, will ignite um, more people to start a business, which is what's desperately needed right now in the world, you know. So it's not just a UK thing, but it's actually a global thing, which is something that I'm very, very excited to be part of. What about particularly as a female entrepreneur? You know, we've been hearing reports from the Women and Equalities Committee mm. today saying the government risks turning the clock back on gender equality because of overlooking some of the, the caring inequalities that are taking place with women, obviously giving up more time Absolutely. away from work, perhaps not getting the understanding from employers it, do you see those kind of situations arising with some of the clients that you're dealing with at the moment yeah i mean my new my new project i'm doing now is startup business coaching so i'm named as the startup coach and you can find me on facebook if you want more information and i am dealing with a lot of um mums that obviously are homeschooling right now um that you know, really want to earn an income because they used to have part-time jobs, but obviously a lot of those jobs have gone now. And the only way to support their family um, is to have a side hustle or start a small business. Um, obviously the welfare as well, you know, that unfortunately the mom in the house is doing the bulk of the work still because they're homeschooling, they're cooking the meals, they're possibly, you know, trying to hold a part-time job together if they work from home. You know, you're juggling a lot. It, it really is, you know, you're up against the odds. I think if they kind of like, you know, take their ideas and monetize it so that they can create an income for their family, you know, that is really the way forward. So they have that freedom. You know, when you start a business, it's not just working 90 hours. You know, it's actually creating the business model that works for you. So if you wanted to work three days a week, you can do that. Build it in with the business idea that you've got. And that's what I'm teaching the mums, the people that are being made redundant, the people that are furloughed, even the 20s and 30s that realise actually their jobs are not safe anymore, you know? There's no such thing as a job for life. 
I mean, I gave the example of my niece who's 13, actually she's 14 years old. In the first lockdown, she start, we started her first business. She's 13 years old. She learned how to come up with the idea. She learned how to market herself um, to influencers. She learned how to consistently use social media to get her message out there. And she built a business with some pocket money, you know? And I believe that, you know, it's doable because I'm teaching so many people right now from all walks of life with all different business ideas. If you have the foundations in place, meaning the business structures, the marketing, the sales, the operations, the finance, the idea, um, and also the HR, if you wanted to hire someone, like outsource things, you can absolutely start a business from scratch right now in this recession, in this pandemic, you know? I don't see why you can't. And that's what I'm doing right now with a lot of, you know, men and women that are coming to me for advice. People that are struggling with ideas as well. We have a program where we go through and we basically go through all the different ideas they have and we kind of like select the best ones and we mind map it out to like what would that look like if you were going to start that idea so it gives them a bit of a kind of like a vision before they go for it because when you start a business you need that you need that plan so that's what i'm doing right now i'm very, very excited about doing that as well Lisa, I have to say, I've been enjoying many of your online videos that you posted, including <laughs> when your daughter, Kim Chi, what is she, around 15 months old, joined yeah. you, they're fantastic. Um, but one of the things you posted recently was, don't let yourself make excuses for not starting something. Yeah. That can be so easy to do, but you say, actually, you just need a few fundamentals to get going. Yeah, you know what, it's all about having the support. Um, a lot of the people just think it's not the right time now, but... If you think about it, you know, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, but actually the best time to plant is also now. And, you know, we started the source business with a very um, clear market in mind. And I remember when my great grandfather started his source business, if he kept going, we would have been billionaires by now. Unfortunately, you know, he lost his business due to a family um, circumstance. But we reinvented that and we built it up. You know, we brought back the family name. And all I can say is that if you're clear on what are you selling, who it's for, and how you're going to deliver it, those three clarity areas, you can succeed in anything in life. You know, whether it would be to be entrepreneurial in your career, but also entrepreneurial in a business as a product or a service. Well, if you want to find out more about the spirit of enterprise, which is all about, as Lisa's been describing, backing those faith-inspired entrepreneurs with the right coaching and connections and capital, all you need to do is go online to thespiritofenterprise.net, thespiritofenterprise.net. Lisa, I could talk for you so much longer, <laughs> but it's been lovely to have your company. Lisa Chi is MBE. Do make sure you check her out on Facebook as well, the Startup Business Coach. Thank you, Lisa, for joining us. Thank Thank you, Vicky. Take care.